Good morning and happy Easter. He is alive, and we are here this morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Would you join us as we sing? Let the children sing a song of liberation. The God of our salvation set us free. Death, where is thy sting? The curse of sin is broken. The empty tomb stands open. Come and see. He's alive, 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 hallelujah. Alive, praise and glory to the Lamb. Oh, he's alive, 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 hallelujah, alive. out for Christ the one and only so powerful and holy rescued me yeah death won't hurt me now because he has redeemed me no grave will ever keep me from my king yeah, I'm alive 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 hallelujah alive praise and glory to the Lamb oh, Worthy of a praise, worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the mighty King. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy of a praise. Worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy, worthy, oh, worthy is the Lamb, worthy of a praise. Worthy is the one who overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Praise and glory to the Lamb. Oh, I'm alive, 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 hallelujah, alive forever, amen. I'm alive forever, amen. Good morning and welcome to online worship with Central Baptist Church of Crandall, Texas. We're so glad that you joined us today. Today is Easter Sunday. This is the Sunday in which we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. As Brother Charlie always says, the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. And certainly it does. The resurrection of Christ gives us hope for eternal life And the Bible says that Jesus Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. That means that his resurrection demonstrates that all those who follow him, all those who trust in him for salvation will be resurrected one day also. So we're glad that you joined us in this online worship service to celebrate that blessed event, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll have our regular service at 1015 today and we encourage people to come if they possibly can. We hope our auditorium will be full of worshipers all celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Y'all have been so faithful to give over this year of the pandemic, and we just thank you for that. Your faithfulness has been truly, truly amazing and a blessing to all. You can give in many different ways. You can give through the online app. You can give through our website. You can give... Uh, by mail. You can bring your gift by the church, or of course, we'll be glad to send someone uh, to pick up your gift if you prefer. Now let's pause and dedicate this Easter Sunday service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your death on the cross and your resurrection from the grave. Truly, that gives us hope. If any people ever had a reason to celebrate, it's us. We celebrate your sacrificial death on the cross 
and we celebrate your resurrection from the grave. Truly, the tomb could not hold you, and it won't hold us either, because we have hope for eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord Jesus, we dedicate this service to you, and we pray that it will honor and glorify your holy name. And all this we pray in the name of our precious Savior. Amen. God sent His Son They called Him Jesus He came to love To heal and forgive He lived and died to buy my pardon An empty grave is there to prove My Savior lives Oh, sing with me Because He lives I can face tomorrow Because He Because I know He holds the future And life is worth living just because He lives How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy it gives but greater still that call the assurance that this child can face certain days because he lives sing it with me because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know He holds the future And life is worth living just because He lives And then one day I'll cross I'll fight life's final war with pain And then as death gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory And life is worth living.
living just because he lives. Go ahead, drive the nails in my head, laugh at me, where you stand, go ahead, say it isn't me, the day will come, when you will see. Cause I'll rise again There ain't no power on earth can tie me down Yes, I'll rise again Death can't keep me in the ground Go ahead and mock my name, my love for you is still the same. Go ahead and bury me, but very soon I will be free. I'll rise again There ain't no power on earth can keep me back Yes, I'll rise again Death can't keep me in the ground Go ahead, say I'm dead and gone, you will see, mm, you were wrong, go ahead, try and hide the sun, but all will see, and I'm the one. Dude, no way! I told you! You're not gonna believe what just happened. 
Long ago, this is what they felt like when it happened. And today, it's how we should feel too. Because what it meant for them, it means for us. He has risen. Hallelujah. Uh, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday, but you and I both know that today on Easter Sunday is a Sunday like no other Sunday in the year. We celebrate this. We're filled with joy. Uh, the week of passion has brought heaviness upon our heart because we understand that it's because of my sin and your sin that Jesus Christ died on the cross. But today we celebrate the fact that He has risen from the grave. And we celebrate that because it means that not only do we have eternal life, uh, life that has been forgiven because of the atonement of Christ on the cross, but everlasting life because of His resurrection from the dead. Death holds no power over us. Amen. And so today we celebrate. Uh, we thank God for uh, already the praises that we have sang together and now we come to the preaching of the Word of God. And for that, I ask you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15 is a chapter where the Apostle Paul is talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, about what our glorified bodies is going to be like. It's an exciting chapter in the Scripture. We're just going to look at the first part of it. As we focus on the resurrection changed everything. And so uh, that's our text today. Paul said, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which we preach to you, which also you received, and which you stand, by which you are also saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preached, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Jesus Christ died for our sin according to Scripture, that He was buried and He rose again according to Scripture. The Apostle Paul's celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ is risen. And uh, then he talks about the evidence of the resurrection. He said He was seen first of all by uh, Peter and then by the twelve. And He was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. That's when he was writing that passage of Scripture. Uh, but some have fallen asleep, or some have died. And after that, he was seen by James, and then by the apostles. Paul, and he goes on to say, and last of all, he is seen by me. You know that Jesus Christ revealed himself to the apostle Paul in a vision. And so uh, we praise the Lord for the text because that brings hope to us. You know, it's interesting, but when Jesus Christ was actually crucified in Jerusalem in 33 A.D., there were only approximately 120 true disciples or followers of Jesus Christ. Whereas today, on this Easter Sunday that we celebrate in 2021, and this year, as we celebrate that, there are 2.3 billion people that claim to be uh, in a relationship with Jesus Christ, who would say with you and with me today that Jesus Christ is who He said He was. He did what He said He did. We have committed our life to the reality and the truth that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, died on the cross, was buried, and was resurrected from the dead. 2.3 billion. Let me kind of help you get that in, in perspective. That's one out of every three people who are alive in this world today would say, I uh, commit to that. I believe that with all of my heart. Let me, let me give you a bigger uh, uh, insight to what that looks like. Uh, Christianity is the largest group of people in the world by far. As, as a matter of fact, the church 
is larger than China. The church is larger than China and Europe together. The church is larger than China, Europe, and the United States all combined. That's how many people who profess that they believe that Jesus Christ is indeed the Messiah, that He was who He said He was. He did what He said that He would do. And uh, they, they, in their uh, experience, have committed their life to Him. Uh, the reality of what that looks like may vary uh, from what you believe as a Christian and I believe it as a Christian, but at least uh, one out of every three people would say, I believe the biblical account, I accept it as truth and reality in my own life. Now the question is, how did the church grow from 120 uh, to where it is today? Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what brought about this great transformation, this great change, this great uh, gathering of people following uh, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, it, it's the most important and significant event of, of all of history. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> now, uh, there's a great difference between the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resuscitation of the dead. All past resurrections cannot compare to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's nothing like it. You say, well... Uh, people were resurrected before, and it's true. Jesus uh, resurrected Lazarus. But here's the difference, and here's what significance Easter makes. <clears throat> Jesus Christ was buried a natural body, but was raised a spiritual body. Every other resurrection uh, before has that same uh, connotation to it. Uh, when Lazarus died, he was buried in a natural body, but he was resurrected in a natural body. In other words, he was going to have to go through the death process again. It was a miracle that Jesus Christ did. And so uh, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, uh, in this same chapter, look at verse 44, uh, the Bible says uh, he was uh, Buried a natural body, but he raised a spiritual body. In other words, a glorified body. A body now that is designed to live throughout eternity. And that's exactly what uh, the resurrection means to us. It means that because of Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. As a matter of fact, the only way that we know there is an afterlife is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the only way that you know that. Uh, not not uh, the resurrection of somebody uh, from the past or the resuscitation of somebody who was pronounced dead uh, in the hospital, but somehow they uh, came back and uh, got their breath and their heart started beating again. Uh, Jesus Christ was buried, a natural body, but he was raised a spiritual body, a supernatural body, a glorified body. And because of that, you and I uh, celebrate this day uh, not just because uh, we love the Lord Jesus Christ, and we do, and not just because we mourn over the fact that He had to die because of our sin, and He did, uh, but we celebrate it because for us personally, it means that because He is alive, we have life eternal. And that's exciting to every one of us. And my goodness, can we can't begin to comprehend, uh, even though we'll try today to get a glimpse of what it is, uh, that it means to us that we have eternal life. The resurrection uh, brings hope to me, first of all, because it means that my sin has been forgiven. As I've been saying, it proves that Jesus Christ is who He was because uh, He did what He said that He would do. Uh, the book of Ephesians, Paul writes uh, to the church at Ephesus, he says this in chapter 1, so we praise God for the glorious grace of God has been poured out upon all of us who belong to His dear Son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sin. He has showered us with kindness. I want to tell you, my friend, the Bible says that uh, Jesus Christ Life, giving his life on the cross, paid for and bought the forgiveness of our sin. Now, why is that so important? Well, because all of us know what it is to live with regrets in our life, to live with remorse uh, over our life, 
and to live with guilt because of the things that we've done in our life. Every one of us uh, know what that is to do that. But Jesus Christ, the Bible says, put himself on the cross because he loved us. He was not a victim of Rome. He was not a victim of the Jewish uh, uh, religious community. He laid his life down on the cross freely for us. He was a sacrificial lamb that we talked about uh, last week. Uh, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He gave his life, willingly uh, gave his life. On the cross, he paid the debt of our sin. As we talked about Wednesday night. Uh, on the cross, he uttered the words, it is finished. The mission that Jesus came to do was done. Te teleasa, it is finished. Price paid in full. You couldn't pay for your sin, uh, no matter how you tried. You couldn't earn it. You couldn't deserve it. You couldn't pay for it. My friend, it's all by grace. On the cross, Jesus was that sacrificial lamb. He died in your place. He died in my place. And because of that, he forgave our sin. Uh, somebody once said, uh, he was nailed to the cross, so we don't have to keep nailing ourselves to the cross over the guilt and remorse that we feel. He put himself there. Isaiah the prophet, 700 years before Jesus Christ was ever born into this world, he said this, we all like sheep have gone astray. Every man has turned according to his own way. Oh my goodness. Uh, how important that is. How valuable that is to us. The Bible says he died in our place. Uh, let's just say that this uh, piece of paper contains a record of every sin that I've, all, uh, I've ever done and all the good deeds that I've done. Now, it's all there. Now, of course, it would have to be uh, a volume uh, larger than this building to record all those things. But let's just, for illustration's sake, pretend that. The Bible says that uh, God, uh, I've been separated from God. My sin, there's a gulf between me and God. My sin has separated me from God. Here I am. Here God is. There's a gulf between us. The Bible says that God took our sin and he laid it upon Jesus Christ on the cross. Jesus paid for it. That sin that separated me from God. He paid for that sin and now then I can have access to God. I want to tell you, my friend, what a joyous thing it is to talk about. I just copied down that passage out of the New Living Translation. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have left God's plan and followed our own. Is that true in your life? Yes, it is. True in my life, certainly. Yet God laid on him our sin, the sin of all of us. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet never said a word. He was led like a lamb, the lamb of God. We talked about that as to a slaughter. Like a sheep who was silent before his shears. He didn't open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. He was struck down uh, for the rebellion of my people, Isaiah talking about Israel. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was uh, buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave, and we know that exact prophecy was fulfilled. Joseph of Arimathea uh, had that empty tomb right there, was a believer and brought Jesus to his own tomb. Uh, he was uh, the Lord's good plan to, uh, uh, to, to crush him and cause him grief. In other words, it was part of, from the foundation of the world, the very plan of God, that God himself was going to become flesh, dwell among us so that he could die and pay for the price of our sin. And yet his life made an offering for sin. Uh, he will... Have many descendants, and he does. You are a descendant, I'm a descendant. Everybody that's received him as a children of God. Let's just say today, uh, 2.3 billion people just living today, not counting all those who have preceded us. He will enjoy a long life, eternal life. That's, that's what he came out of that tomb. He defeated death. And the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. And that's exactly right. And as I said, that prophecy was given 700 years before Jesus Christ was born. And yet Jesus fulfilled every prophecy concerning his first coming, his death, burial, and he'll, he will fulfill every scripture concerning uh, the, the life that's going to come when he returns. I'm telling you, my friend, it was God's plan. But it was our sin that caused Jesus Christ to die on the cross. We can't go to Easter 
without mentioning he died in your place. He died in my place for our sin. Jesus, the Bible says, was handed over to die because of our sin. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. And he was raised from the dead to make us right with God. Our sin, my sin, put Jesus on the cross. Who is included in us? Who, is, who all is guilty? Well, you are. I am. Everyone who has ever lived. Everyone that's going to live between now and the time that Christ returns. Uh, but it says we are forgiven. We, he has made us right with God. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for that truth. And that brings us hope. I'm forgiven uh, from my past sins. I'm forgiven by my present sins. I've got great news for you today. Uh, that death on the cross and me being his child guarantees that I am forgiven even of sins that I have not committed yet. Uh, if I live long enough, I know I'll commit those uh, not intentionally, not meaningly, uh, meaningfully, but uh, it's just going to be a reality. I deal with this carnal flesh. I'm telling you, I have hope. I'm going to be in heaven. Hallelujah. And if you're born again, you're going to be in heaven. And I just thank the Lord for that. I just wanted to begin this message today. To say the first thing that the, uh, that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ does, it brings us hope that forgiveness of sin is a reality. It's real. We don't experience it someday in eternity. We experience it right now. Not just in the sweet by and by, but in the nasty now and now. Amen. I want to say to you today, the resurrection not only uh, gives us hope that our sins have been forgiven, uh, but it removes the fear of death. That makes us hopeful. We're no longer afraid to die. Uh, it, 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 we might dread the process of death or even uh, the pain of death. But my friend, if we're believers, we don't have to fear death itself. Because the Bible says through the resurrection of Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ broke the power of death. He came back from death. He conquered death. The grave could not hold him. The resurrection is the only, as I said, evidence of, uh, that we really have that gives us a picture of the reality of afterlife, that there is a life beyond this life. Jesus' resurrection proved that there is. I know that uh, you've heard stories about other people who uh, have had near-death experiences, I want to tell you, uh, wonderful stories. There's been books written about uh, uh, experiences that people have. But near death is not death. Can you say amen to that? It's not death. Uh, but when somebody dies uh, in my lifetime, in your lifetime, uh, since Jesus Christ and the miracle of, of what Jesus did on earth, there has not been anybody that has been resurrected from the dead until Jesus came. Uh, we might hope that there is something after life. We might believe that there is something after life. But I want to tell you, my friend, Jesus removes all doubt. There is an afterlife. And we have hope that there is an afterlife. Therefore, I don't have to fear death itself because death is not an end to my life, but it's the beginning of a greater, brighter, newer life in Jesus Christ. That's why when we celebrate somebody's memorial service, that we, we call it a celebration because it is a celebration because, listen, uh, they are not, they're not here. They're gone. They're, they're, they're going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an afterlife that is more real, more beautiful than this temporary life that we have here for 70, 80, 90, 100 years. I'm telling you, Jesus said to the repentant thief dying next to him on the cross, when he turned to Jesus and he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus said to that, that repentant thief, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Oh, I'd love just to take a trip uh, through the Bible and talk about what heaven is like and what the Bible tells us. It's not a complete picture, but it gives us enough insight that uh, it makes our heart glad to know uh, that we're more alive there than we've ever been here. We're going to know uh, one another as we are known. The Bible uh, helps us to understand and tells us flat out that that's true. Uh, that uh, uh, there's going to be a reunion with those who preceded us. Paul talked about that in 1 Thessalonians. And there's going to be a reward for all of us who have served Him faithfully. Listen to me. Eternal life is more alive than we ever thought about life here. It's a life of business. It's not the idea that 
uh, we're floating on a cloud playing a harp. That's Hollywood's picture of what uh, heaven must be like. I'm telling you, man, uh, it is an exciting life filled with uh, all the things that bring joy, complete happiness into our, into our life. Paul said, it's not entered into the mind and the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Paul said, I'm confident, yes, well, pleased. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Paul talked about death as gain. For me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. That word gain is a financial uh, term. It means that I'm going to benefit from it. I'm going to have, make a profit uh, from it. Paul was excited about it. He had the vision. In 2 Corinthians, he tells the church at Corinthians uh, in, uh, that uh, he was caught up into vision. He got to peer inside of heaven. So wonderful, but he was not allowed to uh, even speak of it. It was so many things. We wouldn't get it. We wouldn't understand it. It's so beyond our understanding. My friend, I want to tell you, heaven is real. Jesus' resurrection proves that to us. Jesus said it like this and said it best himself. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die like everyone else, he's going to live again. Jesus told the disciples as he is preparing them for his exit, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. If we're not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. I want to tell you, those are the words of the Messiah. Those are the words of the very one that we're talking about today who died for our sin, was buried, and was resurrected again on the third day. He was buried in a tomb. Back in those days, they didn't bury in graveyards like we have, cemeteries. Uh, they uh, hewed out holes in the side of the uh, cliff or uh, a uh, place where they hewed them out out of the stone and they made a tomb. And those tombs were sealed or, or closed off by a, a stone that was rolled in place. And they were used many times. It wasn't just once and done. I mean, there were many times. The Bible says that Jesus uh, was going to be buried in a rich man's tomb. And we know that. If you were, if you were to ever go with Israel, we would go to the garden tomb. And there you would see uh, on the side of the mountain the, the shape of a skull. It looks just like it. That was Calvary. Jesus was... Uh, hung on the cross, died, and immediately moved from the cross to uh, Joseph's tomb, a new tomb that had never been used before. The disciples uh, were fearful, so they, they had left. They were uh, running from uh, the religious leaders. They thought maybe they would may, maybe be next on their list to be done away with. They didn't fully understand or believe the resurrection. Even Jesus tried to teach them that. And the tomb was sealed. And uh, Roman guards, by uh, invitation and request, other uh, Jewish religious leaders were placed to guard his tomb so no one could disturb it or steal his body and pretend that there was a resurrection and say that uh, Jesus resurrected when he really didn't. Well, you and I know that... Uh, the Bible says that when Jesus resurrected, that, that stone was blown away from the entrance of that tomb. And uh, the disciples believed they were finished. They were disillusioned. They were hiding in fear of the religious leaders. But on Sunday morning, uh, following the Sabbath day, Mary went to the tomb. And she found the seal broken and the stone rolled away. And the Roman guards were gone. And the body of Jesus was gone. All that was in the tomb was his grave clothes. Uh, laying in perfect place, by the way. And Jesus speaks to her in that garden uh, around the tomb. And he called her by name, and she recognized him, and, he rec and uh, that he had recognized her. And so with excitement, she runs to where the disciples were heading away and announces to them that, that uh, Jesus Christ was gone. His body was gone. And, of course, uh, they didn't believe him. And so uh, Peter and John, the Bible says, uh, ran literally to the place of uh, the internment of Jesus' body. And they found that it's true that Jesus Christ was not there. He had resurrected. 
and then he met with them. Meeting with Jesus following the resurrection totally transformed their life. Uh, their fear had been turned into boldness now. Their depression turned into courageous confidence. Uh, and uh, Jesus appeared to many people. As a matter of fact, we know that Jesus was in Jerusalem or around Jerusalem and in Galilee for 40 days following his resurrection. 40 days. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Listen to what the Word of God says. For 40 days after his death, Jesus appeared to people many times in many ways to prove beyond a doubt that he was alive. They saw him. They talked with him about the kingdom. And can you imagine some of those conversations that they had? Now, how did the church explode in growth? I'm going to tell you because... Jesus did raise from the dead, and people met with him, and it was confirmed that he was who he said he was. He did what he said he would do. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's how it was. Paul gives us a, a picture of uh, a, a counting of some of those men uh, that he met with. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I, I pass on to you uh, what is most important and what I've also passed on to me, Christ died for our sins. According to Scripture, He was buried and raised from the dead on the third day, just as Scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. And after that, He was seen by more than 500 people at one time, most of whom are still alive, He said, when He was writing this. But some have died. And then He was seen by James and later by all the apostles. And least of all, uh, I, He was seen by myself, Paul said. That is definitive evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's why the church exploded in growth. Forty days he had spent with time. Now let me, uh, let me try to bring this home to you. If I were to come to you today and I were to say, you know, it's interesting. Uh, but yesterday I was, I was uh, at the mall in Mesquite and uh, I saw President Biden. Uh, maybe some of you would say, well, bless your heart, Charlie. We love you, but the cheese has slid off the cracker. But if you saw 12 more people and they were to say to you, you know, I was out at the mall yesterday and I, I saw uh, Jesus, I, I saw President Biden. Uh, you might say, yeah, Charlie said that. I just, no, that's not true. But if, if people kept coming to you and say, yeah, he was there and he's staying over at the uh, uh, hotel at the rodeo arena. Uh, I was over there, and I saw him there. Uh, if 900 people came and said to you, I saw him, okay, now it's on you. It's not on me. It's not on them. It's on you whether you believe it or not. I'm telling you, this is indisputable, definitive evidence that Jesus Christ was alive. And that's why the church exploded with growth. That's why that, that, that later... Rome or anyone else could not get them to recant their story. Why? It was true. They had saw him. They had visited with him. It totally revolutionized their life. They were no longer afraid of death, as I'm sure they were afraid of the pain of death or uh, how death might come and the dread of that. that. Uh, but certainly they were not afraid of it. Why? Because they knew now that because of Jesus Christ, death could not hold them either. There is an afterlife. Jesus Christ brought that. Hallelujah. I hope that uh, it brings hopeful to you. But some of you right now are mourning and grieving Christians that have died. It's so hard for you to let go. You messed them. I want to tell you. They are with Christ in heaven right now, the Bible says. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Listen to me. Celebrate the resurrection like you've never celebrated before because it gives you hope. And one day we'll be together. There'll be a reunion of all of us. My goodness, can you imagine the, the, uh, the great uh, supper that we're going to have that Jesus talked about? It's going to be exciting. I had to move on. The resurrection brought God's Spirit to indwell us. Not only uh, were they with Christ, but Jesus said uh, in John chapter 14, he went on to say, When I go, another like you, a paraclete, one identical to me, I'm coming. I'm not going to be with you. I'm going to be in you. I'm going to dwell in you. 
The Bible says, Paul said, What do you not know that your body is a temple of God? How? Because the Holy Spirit of God is dwelling in us. He's indwelling us. And He's bringing with us the power, the power to live in this life. Listen to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 1. Jesus' last words before He ascended into heaven. Listen to me. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to tell every one everywhere about me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria even to the ends of the earth that's Pentecost Jesus ascended into heaven 40 days he had spent in his resurrection body people had seen him talked with him uh, sat down across from him walked with him and then he ascended into heaven 10 days later he had instructed the disciples to uh, go into uh, a place in Jerusalem. I believe it was the same place where they had the last meal. I've been to that very place. And the Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God fell on them. It was a miracle and empowered them. That's what we call Pentecost. We'll be celebrating that in May, Pentecostal, uh, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, the day of the miracle of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The power of God, not just with us, but in us. The Holy Spirit took them uh, and, and dwelled them. And it transformed the disciples. It took them from fearful to fearlessness. It took them from hopelessness to hopefulness. It took them from being cowards to being courageous men. Nothing can fill uh, the purpose uh, that it was designed for without power. Uh, you can take a vacuum cleaner, it's worthless until you plug it in to a power outlet. Uh, a toaster oven is worthless until you're able to plug it in to an outlet. You and I are worthless. We'll never fulfill the purpose by which God created us without the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit of God. But he says the moment we ask Christ to come into our heart, the Holy Spirit indwells us. Oh, hallelujah. He indwells us. Nothing uh, transforms life like that. And so the resurrection uh, brings us hope because it brings us power, the indwelling power of God Himself, not just God over us, not just God with us, Emmanuel, but God in us, God indwelling us. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, the Bible says, I pray that you'll begin to understand how incredibly great His power is to help those who believe in Him. Now listen to this. What kind of power, Charlie? It is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. I want to tell you, that same power that resurrected Christ, that blew that stone away from the entrance of that tomb. My friend, that same power is available to you and I to live this life and to glorify God and to fulfill our purpose. Jesus said uh, that he had came to fulfill the mission that he had. Uh, we have that same power to fulfill the purpose of our life, the mission that God has given us. What kind of power? Well, power to free us from our past. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I can be free from the power. I have so many regrets. I have so much remorse over things that I've done in my life. But listen to me. I have power. I'm set free from that thing. I can live different. I am different because of that. Power to start over. How many times uh, have you started and failed and started and failed? And God keeps giving us power to start over again and again, to keep on going, power to keep going. Power to overcome our habits, hurts, and hang-ups that have caused us continual grief. Oh, that's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus loves us, and He always will love us. One of the most famous passages in all the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. How long is he going to love you? I know Jesus died on the cross. He died out of love, but I'm not sure he still loves me. You don't know what I've done. Listen to me. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3 says that God has loved you with an everlasting love. That means uh, there's no beginning to his love. There'll never be no end. There's nothing you can do. That'll make God love you more. There's nothing you've ever done or can do that will make God love you less. God has loved you with an everlasting love. And listen to this. He didn't stop there. With loving kindness draws you to himself. 
God loves you. He doesn't want to live distant from you. He, he resurrected so He could live in relationship with you. He empowered you so that you could, you could fulfill the purposes by which God created you to overcome sin in your life and live victoriously in your life. The resurrection gives us hope of eternal life. That's what we're talking about today. That's why we're celebrating today. Listen to me. I have, uh, we have been born into a new life which is an inheritance that cannot be destroyed or corrupted and will not fade away. That inheritance is kept in heaven for you, Peter said. It's not going to go away. We have a reservation for it. It's going to be there uh, when we get there. Uh, Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your heart might be open so that you can see and understand the hope which God has called you. He's called you, just as he called me as a young child of six years of age. And I said yes, as much as I understood to all that I knew to God. And he's met me and over, over, uh, over blessed me. I don't even know if that's a word, but given me beyond anything I could comprehend or understand joy in the midst of, of even horrible circumstances, a, an abiding joy that keeps me and a hope of eternal life. Listen to me. I've got my mom and dad in heaven. I've got a little sister in heaven. I've got, uh, I've got a great niece in heaven. Uh, I don't ever talk about losing my mom and dad. I haven't lost them. I know exactly where they are. And one day the Bible says I'm going to be with them. Michael sings, Cry Holy. Maybe better than anyone I've ever heard sing that song. And he talks about uh, seeing different people in heaven. But I'm telling you, one day we're going to be with Jesus Christ, just as he promised the thief. That's the hope we have because of the resurrection Sunday. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that is to say, uh, you're God and I'm not. <laughs> I've blown it. I've messed up in my life. I don't deserve any of this. And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Do you believe that? You're here today celebrating it. 2.3 billion people around this globe and maybe even more are celebrating that today. The fact that Jesus Christ, do you believe it? I believe that. Listen to me. Jesus said, you will be saved. What does that mean? Forgiven of sin. I like how Rick Warren says it better than anybody I've ever heard. He said it means that we have a past forgiven, a purpose for living, and a home in heaven. That's what it means. That's why this is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why we do it every Sunday. But there's nothing like the celebration of Easter Sunday. Now, let me ask you, do you know him? Do you know him? Have you confessed your sin? You know what the word confess means? Confess means I agree with. It means that I, I agree, I confirm. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a sinner and that's all that I am. We're not making excuses. We just say to God, I've blown it. I'm not perfect. I've missed the mark. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes me. The wages of sin is death. That word death means separation. It's separated me from God. I know that's true in my life. It's been separated. I was separated. But Jesus Christ came to die on the cross to offer us the free gift of salvation. Not by works, lest any man should claim that they deserve it. It's, it's, the, it, it's, the, it's the, by the grace of God through faith. Faith is how we accept it. I, I, I understand that you are who you said he was. You did what you said you would do. I'm a sinner. I'm separated from God. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life. Have you done that? And the, I, I believe that you are the Messiah, that you resurrected from the grave. It's not just a, a story that man made up. It's reality. And because I've done that, I'm crying out to you, save me. Just as, just as those when Jesus entered in the triumphal Sunday. Hosanna. Lord, save me now. This is your Hosanna moment. Will you cry out to him? You're the Messiah. Hosanna, save me now. Father, I pray for those that might be watching that don't know you for sure in their heart. They have questions they might have been through religious ceremonies, but they're not satisfied. They really know you. Lord, they want the hope of eternal life. 
I pray they would pray a prayer something like this. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I understand that sin has separated me from you. I've fallen short. I've not lived up to even the desire of my own heart for my life, let alone the desire of God's. I'm, I'm not who uh, I should be or not who I can be. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. Right now, Lord, I, I, I say in faith, I believe with everything that's within me that you are the Messiah. I confess that. I believe that. I accept that by faith. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for dying in my place on the cross and raising again to give to me eternal life. And as you give me strength from this day on, I will seek to be a responsible member in your forever family. In Jesus' name. Did you pray that prayer? Let me tell you, my friend. It's not the wording of the prayer that makes the difference. It's the movement of the heart. What, God knows your heart. He knows what's in your heart. And if you prayed that prayer, I'd like for you to let me know. So we could send you some follow-up material so that we could... Pray for you in your new adventure, your new walk with God. Don't let this celebration Sunday end with this Sunday. Let it be the beginning of a new life in Christ. God bless you. Thank you for joining us online today. We are so glad that you were a part of the service. If you have any questions about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, about baptism, or how to join our family at Central Baptist Church, we would love to answer your questions. You can use Facebook Messenger to send us a message, or you can call or email the church. You will find our phone and email information on our website. Thank you again for worshiping with us today, and may God bless you and give you peace.